Okay, hello everyone. Hey. Welcome hey. back. Hi. Hello. Here to the Aussie Carnivore Connection, uh, another week. Um, so I'm DC from DC Learning to Live. And uh, thank you all for joining us. We'll go around the clock and introduce ourselves. We've got an, uh, a new visitor today. So, um, Dave, you want to start off? Um, Dave Mack here from No Carb Life. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us. Okay, and Lindy? Yeah, Lindy, Limitless Lindy here. And, yeah, thank you. Great to see you all. And Hi, I'm Mywin. I'm, I'm from... <laughs> I'm Mywin from the Count of Orosity. Hi, and <laughs> it's great to be here. Okay, hey. cool. Uh, okay, so uh, as our guest, Mywin, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your sure. kind of experience? Sure. Um, I'm 56 years old. Uh, I've been a carnivore since the 1st of January of this year, uh, so about three months now. Um, oh, boy, has it changed a lot. It's changed everything the education on food, um, how one views a diet versus a lifestyle, the fact that it heals the body and it's not just about those numbers on the scale. It's it's on, it's yeah. been a huge it's been a huge huge um, education for me and it and it continues every day. There's something new that I'm learning. Um, I was born in England but I've been out here since I was 13 so I've been here longer than I was in England so I kind of consider myself more of an Aussie really it's only when I lose my temper that that British comes out on me but <laughs> um other than that I, I do consider myself more or less an Aussie now because I've been here for so long very cool yeah. so um what's the biggest what's the best or What's the number one takeaway from uh, have you learned while being on carnivore diet? Oh, just the feeling that you know that you are healing your body, you are healing from the inside out, and that losing weight and losing inches is a lovely side effect. It's about the healing, and that's what got me when I when I watched carnivorous me, Amanda. Um, it was the the pain that she was in. It was that sort of spark that I'm like, it did that. A carnivore lifestyle did that. I'm like, wow, okay. And it's the healing part of it for me. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that should be your first priority, isn't it? I mean, your body yeah. has to heal before it drops the inches. So oh, yeah. um, that's what people should be focused on. Um, it's something we keep telling everyone, don't we? It's like, don't focus on the weight, focus on the healing, and the body will take care of the rest, you know? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay. So, um, we were just backstage there, we we're talking about um, cravings. And this time of year, you know, every holiday season is the same. You know, you've got Christmas, you, um, you got Valentine's, of course, and of course, you've got uh, Easter. Halloween and so on. So there's always, uh, and Americans have Thanksgiving, and uh, you know, there's, there's there's always some sort of holiday, you know, or if not, there's a weekend but barbecue or something like that. But uh, yeah. you always get cravings, you know. And uh, this time of year, Easter, so lots of sweets, of course, chocolates and uh, hot cross buns. You know, hot cross buns are one of my big ones. You know. <laughs> um, uh, you know, especially, uh, yeah, toast them and butter them and, you know, you could down a dozen for lunch, you know. So <laughs> they were pretty good. Um, so how, how how do you deal with cravings now, Dave? Um, or how did you deal with them when you first started Carnival? Um, interesting question. I, I Like, I'm um, very kind of compulsive and if I if I – get my hands on like a, a donut or something like it can't just be that one you know like i'm halfway finished that donut and i'm already thinking about the next one and so i i knew that going in and i thought well i i'm really gonna have to do something about this like i can't even see it and so for me i just had to do everything in my power to completely avoid 
if, coming into any contact with any of that stuff, um, like whether it's sugary food or or um, alcohol or whatever. So, so I wouldn't go into any shops that sold that stuff. Um, I'd walk out of the room if someone came in with it, yeah. anything like that. Yeah, I avoided going to friends. I told friends not to invite me around to anything for a few months, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good way to do it. I know it's pretty difficult in Japan. Uh, there's so many, I mean, so much variety of, of sweets and, um, you know, cake shops and buffets, you know, sweets, buffets. You know, you can, like, you can go to a buffet in Japan and it's all sweets, cakes ice cream yeah and they're dead cheap like you can like 15 bucks all you can eat of you know just buffets of this stuff and the quality the quality is amazing you know they have amazing um uh chocolate bakery. fountains and all this kind uh, of stuff yeah, yeah they're amazing crazy. they really are um dead cheap so it's really really kind of hard to avoid in japan so yeah, I always say like Dave's a legend for for abstaining from that stuff, you know, over there because it is so easy to get and uh, so cheap, and just the food is fantastic. So, yeah. Right, how about you, Lindy? Yeah, I guess my situation is a bit different because I was housebound, so I couldn't get out, and I wasn't exposed to all of that. So that was um, lucky for me. I didn't door dash or do anything like that because I'd be too embarrassed to answer a door anyway. So um, <laughs> just making sure there was nothing in the house. My husband didn't yeah. bring anything into the house, the kids. Um, it was just carnival food that was it here. So I had no choice. That was all I had to eat. Um, I didn't go out, but I didn't want people coming here either because then that would be, you know, easy. So I just avoided all of food anything social yeah. just for the because i had to abstain at the start i was a, i didn't think i could ever moderate but now i'm at a point where i can moderate i can go out i can see things and it doesn't phase me i'm not interested but it's just a matter of getting over that that hurdle and to be able to to get to that stage so i never thought i'd yeah. be ever to be able to moderate at all in my life i thought that was a thing that was going to be with me forever but carnival's mm. giving me that switch now, and I call it my off switch, that I can now, yeah, turn off and not think about a packet of Tim Tams in front, and I don't even flinch. Like, I'm quite happy for other people to eat it in front of me, but I don't want it because I know yeah. I have one, I want the whole packet, and I won't be able to stop, and I am yeah. frightened to spiral. So that keeps me on track now. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean... So like, like we always say, you know, nothing tastes as good as you feel right now, you know. So yeah, it's a good reminder. Um, you just just think about how good you feel at the moment, at the time. Do you want to go back to feeling like crap? You know, basically, like I say, that these are setback foods. You know, they're not yeah. they're not treats. You know, they're setbacks. You know, they're setting you back. They're holding you back from achieving the goals that you really want. So um yeah it, i think the mindset has a lot to do with it as well how you look at the food um i think though the, you know for most people just starting maybe the first three to six months are going to be the more the most difficult um from you know trying to stay away from this kind of uh you know holiday foods and things like that treats mm. so cool when people uh, say have a biscuit you've got to live a little just have one but the thing is i yeah. am living i'm living now yeah. pain free i've got my mobility yeah. back i'm getting out there enjoying my life this is living i wasn't living before you know yeah. i was a prisoner to food and i have that freedom yeah. now so i am yeah, living now it, i suppose I, I suppose that was one blessing for you because you weren't you weren't mobile you couldn't go out and get it yourself yeah um and it's it's a good thing i think to when you first start to get rid of anything like that in the house because yes. if it's not there ready it's it's much easier to just forget about it and do something else um if you if, you know avoid temptation if you can um but like i said you know it depends on how you look at it as well you know i, I look at these foods as setbacks from where i want to be so you know and they're holding you back so how about you, Mark? Oh, sorry, can I just jump in for okay, a second? Uh, I 
I think it's interesting, you know, that people will do that with food and they'll say, oh, come on, just live mm-hmm. a little. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. They wouldn't do that with alcohol or cigarettes or anything like that. Oh, right? yeah, they, they do. Go, yeah, hey, come on, ha- have some heroin. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, they do, they do with other stuff, like socially accepted drugs, like smokes and, and alcohol. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah, so like, you got to live a little, have a beer, you know, yeah, have it, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, um yeah but you're right it's the same as heroin it's like yeah come on live a little stick the needle in your arm you'll be right <laughs> you know it's the same thing <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's the same thing isn't it so yeah yeah having a cookie i mean it, it's just if you don't want to do it you know like i say like don't let other people's uh opinions or um you know their lifestyle change the change or divert you from your goals you know Mm-mm. no yeah so okay how about you marlon how are, you've been since january so almost what three months now yeah how are three you going months. With cravings uh, uh, uh well the cravings i haven't had any uh, I suppose that, I don't know, that m- might make me a freak. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I, I acknowledge that there are a lot of people that do struggle with those cravings because they are very, very real and mm-hmm. they are difficult to navigate, really difficult to navigate. I mean, when I, before I started this, so toward like the last week of December, one of the things that I said to my family was that um, I am happy to cook but i'm not cooking anything i cannot have yeah um now in the past uh specifically when years ago when i was on the ketogenic diet i'd be driving myself crazy cooking a meal for them and a completely separate meal for me i'm like no i'm not doing that again um you know, I'm happy to make, put the roast on, for instance, happy to cook bacon and eggs like I did last night. If you guys want to turn that bacon into a bacon sandwich, you can do that. I'm, if I do a roast and if you want roast vegetables, you can do that. I'm not doing it because if, mm. if I can't have it, why would I want to cook it? So, you know, in relation to hot cross buns, Mm. Um, for instance there's a tray of them on top of the freezer I find nowadays when something comes into the house that is dough related I sort of look at it with some measure of contempt it's like why is that in my house and how quickly can I get rid of it I actually get a little bit angry that it's come into the house. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, I just yeah. want the hot cross buns gone. Um, yeah. But, you know, the meat intake in the house has increased. Um, my husband, who had kidney stones very early on when I started Carnivore, he went for his checkup today and his meat has increased. He's drinking more water. The sugary drinks like Coke and all those fruit drinks have gone. Um, he's got no trace of kidney stones at all. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah that's good. None. However, <laughs> I do have here the paperwork they sent him home with. Can't wait to talk about that this week. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah, fair so, enough. So, yeah. I put blinkers on a lot of the time and that works for me. I have to, you know, because it allows me to remain focused and that's what I need to do. I I need to look at vegetables as poison. I need to look at fruits as poison. That's what's going to get me through. I I just have to. And the blinkers are on and they're the healthiest blinkers I've ever had. Yeah. That's the thing too. You know, like when you you finally, I think it, it helps when people realize that this is um, the healthiest way to eat, like you are actually healing your body and you know you know, and you trust the process that it's going to work, it helps a lot because it, it's more motivating. 
When, yeah. you, you know, when you try other diets, you, you're sort of uncertain and you think, well, I don't know, is it going to work or not sort of thing, and you, you're going to deviate much easier, I think. Yep. Um, I've avoided being around people who eat high carbs for that reason, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes you may need to, you know, um, because, you know, a lot of people, they don't take it seriously. They don't take diet seriously, um, even – even when they're in really poor health, um, they, they just don't think about it. They think that, oh, well, you know, you've got to die of something, you know, whatever, and that sort of that sort of thing. You've got to live a little, like Lindy said, and uh, they just carry on and they don't want to know about either, like a healthier way of living. That's just the way some people are. But, um, you know, the thing is you can't let them influence you on your journey, you know, and that's the, that's the most important thing for you anyway. You're allowed that, to I be selfish about your own point. health. Mm. No, that's right. I think that's it's an not an important selfish. point. Because you, you kind of, in the moment, you'll feel like, oh, if I just join in, I'm going to feel really good. Right. Yeah. But, and, and you're not thinking about the future. But, like, in the future, you're going to be looking back to those moments and thinking, what did I do to myself? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And for what? You know, just to be part of the crowd, you know? Um, and you know, like it's a lot of people ruin their lives, but you, you, be, you simply become the people you hang around, you know, that's just the way it is. And yeah. if you hang around a lot of uh people who like hang around the pub and go drinking every week, then that's who you become. And same with you know, eat junk food and eat so you know, drink soft drinks and all that sort of stuff. So you sort of become the people you hang around, unless you, um, I mean, there's not much you can do about family. Um, and uh, like some people might try to avoid the, the family uh, sort of get-togethers and that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, it, there are times you're just going to have to, you know, suck it up as well and get on with it and just remind yourself that you're doing it for a reason, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I think very often... We need to uh, be backed into a corner before we are prepared to change. No. Yeah. Yeah, that quite often does happen, you know. Um, Rock bottom. Unfortunately. Sorry, Dave. No, I was just oh, saying no, rock no, bottom. No. Rock yeah. bottom. Yeah. Yeah, not a nice place to be, but often we need to be in that pit before we can pull ourselves out. Yeah, yeah. I'm so many lion diet, women, uh, mead, salt, water, um, and black tea. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I love carnival, but the cravings were too much. Yeah, trying to stop them, trying for 90 days. Yeah, good. Uh, give it a good solid try. You know, they, uh, like for a lot of people, cravings can be very difficult to manage. Um, you know, like if you go shopping for food, you walk past the ice cream aisle, for example, and you think, oh, damn. You know, I want some of that. Yeah. But um, mm. the thing is to remind, like I said, remind yourself why you're doing it. And, you know, also remind yourself just what that food really is. It's not food. You know, mm. it's you know, seed oils and sugar that it, it's poison. Literally, it is literally poison. Mm. Yeah. Just remember That's, the cravings will pass. Yeah, you know, this yeah. too like shall pass. It's yeah. it's like being a chain smoker. You, you think you're going to be able to get out of it, but there's just one day, like along the you know the giving up path that you just get to where you go, okay, I don't feel the urge anymore. Yeah, that's so right. It will pass. Yeah, it does. It always passes. You know, like I always I keep telling people, yeah, you know, it's it's daunting at first when you look at the your big picture. It, it sometimes it looks like a big mountain in front of you. But just focus on each step and you'll get there eventually. It's like, so if you just make it through one day and you think, okay, I, I've got this today, I'm good. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to, you know, I've just got another day. Just one day at a time will get you through, you know. And and don't be too hard on yourself too if you, if you do fall off the wagon and you, you give in to temptation, have a drink or, you know, have some ice cream or something like that. But make your next meal carnival. 
Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for the day after tomorrow. Make your next meal carnival, you know, and you'll mm -hmm. feel a lot better for it, you know. Yep. So I always treated kind of carnival like a, a craving as your body's reaching out for nutrition. It wants nutrition, so exactly. give it some meat. Uh, if you give it ice cream, it's empty calories. There's no nutrition in that. Eat some meat. Um, if you don't feel like eating meat, are you really hungry? You know, you may be yeah. just bored and a, a habit that you've, I'm bored, yeah. I'm just going to eat something. So go and distract yeah. yourself. Go and pull some weeds in the garden, have a bath, have a shower, brush your teeth, um, distract yourself, and maybe that that craving will pass. So yeah. you yeah. need to figure out whether you're hungry or if you're craving because you're bored or trying to uh, a comfort food, eating. So you've got to try and determine that as well. But I would just eat through cravings, but eat with carnival foods. Try and keep it clean. Yeah, exactly. And eventually the body's just going to say, okay, every time I crave, you're going to stuff my face full of meat. <laughs> then, you know, and you just forget about the other stuff. Yeah. That's a good point, Lindy. And uh, when you are craving, you are, your body does want nutrients. So, um, and a lot of it does come down to boredom. So if you get yourself moving, you, you might find you're not hungry at all. But, you know, eat, eat fat is really good. If you're going through um, that stage, increase your fat. Fat should be your focus, okay, over protein and any, anything else. Fat should be your, your main focus. Um, like even just frying up like diced, like off cuts of fat and things like that is a great snack. Um, and you'll find that the fat will sedate you or satiate you, sorry. Yeah. Um, it will satiate you and you will feel much better for it, you know. Yeah, lowers uh, your cortisol as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, yeah, which lowers, you know, and you just feel better, you know, low on yeah. stress and everything like that. So because you, when, you, when you're craving, you do stress a bit because you want it, you know. So you, you, go, you do raise your cortisol a bit through, um, like, cravings and things like that. So try and satiate yourself with some fat, okay. A um, question. I know meat, is it? Is uh, great for healing? Oh, I think it's uh, meat. meat. Yeah, yeah, meat. okay, yeah. I know meat is great for healing, but any ideas of uh, any supplements um, that would be good and healing cancers? Uh, wondering about, for instance, vitamin C or zinc. Uh, good question. Um, you don't need to... Um, if you supplement with vitamin C, okay, you're then introducing a competitor for the vitamin C um, that you're absorbing from meat, okay? So you don't need, any, when you're on the carnivore diet, you're fat adapted and everything, the, the necessity for vitamin C is in the, the microbes, okay? It's, it's just minimal amount. Um, when you add, like, um, fruits, supplements, or anything like that, it's like trying to get two fat guys through a, a skinny door and you just won't absorb either 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 one of them, okay? So you have to sort of try and push these two fat guys through this door to get it, and you have to eat a large amount. So don't worry about trying to um, supplement vitamin C. Zinc you shouldn't need to because, you know, there's quite a lot of zinc in meat. Um, but I am... Myself, I'm kind of anti supplements really because most of them um, they use uh, things like vegetable gums and um, seed oils as binders and things like that uh, in the supplements, but they also break down in the stomach and you don't actually absorb anything anyway. Um, so you really a lot of a lot of the time you're just wasting your money. Um, however. Um, having said that, there there are some, um, I wouldn't call, I mean, they're not supplements, they're more like dietary enhancers. I mean, if you are on a clean carnivore diet and you're eating enough fat and meat, okay, you should have all of the minerals and everything that you need for your body to heal. Uh, I don't take anything at all. I'm off zero meds and, and supplements. But there are enhancers, dietary enhancers that will increase. 
things such as your stem cell count and production and things like that, like cereal products that um, Professor K um, promotes. Okay. So I, I haven't tried those things yet myself. I will be doing that soon. So I will let you know how it all goes. Um, but I, for an example, their cereal uh, stem cell uh, enhancer. Um, I was on a similar product when I was going through treatment or when I just finished uh, my first lot of treatments um, and building up to my uh, stem cell um, uh, collection, I, you know, I was lifting and I was fasting and I took um, a product that helped me produce more stem cells and I it really helped a lot actually so my viable stem cell count was 99.4 percent which helped much you know, like in a year or so later I was you know when I had my stem cell transplant so um, but that's my take on supplements I don't think you need to waste your money on them uh, because like I said they most of them will break down in your stomach a lot of them are plant-based a lot of them you also use uh, like uh, soy uh, binders and thing and uh, seed oils to to actually bind the product together so um there's a lot of you know and they're made by pharma the big pharma so you're going from like medications to supplements and you're, you're still funding the same people so um that's why i avoid them okay anyone else want to add to that no i, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't find my <laughs> mute button um <laughs> Uh, I'm always missing the mute button. Um, I, I don't take any supplements either. And just after something I've seen in Japan this week, um, it, it's quite scary, actually. Like there's a company yeah. in trouble over in Japan because people have like been poisoned with some supplements they've taken because of some stuff that was in it. Yeah. So it, it's pretty scary. Uh, a lot of it's just, uh, I mean, a lot of the, the supplements, a lot of it is just a lie as well. You know, like, I'll give you an example. When I was um, in Japan, I was a, I was a trainer and um, I had uh, these people with, always pushing, like, I get krill oil. Krill oil is cleaner than um, fish oil because, you know, krill feed from the bottom of the ocean, not the top of the ocean, so there's not as much mercury. That's a lie, okay? It's, for example, like the krill, actually what they do, they feed on the top of the, the, the water. They sink, okay, because they're full. When they're full, the stomachs are full. When they're empty again, they swim back to the top and they feed, okay? Yeah. It, it's just marketing lie, things like that. There's absolutely no difference between krill oil and fish oil, okay? Um, most of these products get filtered anyway and... But like again, the, those gel caps, for example, they are full of um, vegetable um, gum. Okay, and so it's just products that I avoid. Things like omega threes. If you mix your meats, okay, you're going to get a lot of um, a mix, a good mixture of uh, fats. Okay, your omega threes and sixes and things like that. So, uh, lamb, for example, is very high in omega threes. Okay, you do get. Um, omega-3s from beef and other things as well but lamb is very high in omega-3s the so lamb fat is really good plus you get salmon and tuna like if you get wild caught fish like that okay also very high in omega-3s and good meat okay wild caught is better than farm bread because the farm bread fish are just fed on like soy pellets and things like that so th they don't have the omega-3s that wild fish have Wild fish have omega threes because they feed on other fish and things like that. So um, there's a big difference. Okay. So, but personally, I don't supplement. I don't supplement with electrolytes. I just eat a lot of salt. Okay, a good mineral salt. But depends on your where you are coming from. You may need to put electrolytes in. So that's up to you. Mm. You could check out Homestead How. They've got the Healing Humanity documentary um jeff de prosperous if you go to the healing humanity dot movie the website and under the the conditions tab i think there's a cancer section and that has his action plan i don't know if there's anything about supplements there but it just details what he does currently yeah for his he, maintaining he does take his... a lot of supplements yeah yeah he, yeah and... he does take a lot of supplements but again 
um, yeah, I mean, honestly, you're just wasting your money. Yeah. yeah. But um, he's got some interviews with Professor Siegfried as well, who's specialises in cancer and that. So yeah. that might be another avenue to follow as well. Just do your research. Yeah. Mm. Actually, I, I also have a good interview with uh, Professor Siegfried. Uh, if you want to check okay. it out, he's, yeah, he's brilliant, actually. I'll, I'll post that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Uh, do Lindy, do you supplement? I have vitamin D and folate only because I'm deficient in both of those. Otherwise, I wouldn't yeah. have anything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Actually, if you do supplement, one uh, one little trick uh, to help the supplements get through your stomach is to eat eat them with a very fatty meal. The fat will help protect them. Uh, until they get to the digestive tract, okay? Oh, so okay. that will help. Okay. okay. Uh, and if you get fat-soluble vitamins, uh, that will also help as well, but they are quite a bit expensive. So. Okay, that's uh, here's an interview with Professor Seafried. I'll just post that for you. Okay. Um, very good interview. Professor Seafried is, is wonderful, actually. Very good um yeah but that's just my take on supplements so just be careful which ones you get fat soluble is the best or take them with a lot of fat um, avoid vitamin c excess vitamin c that you don't use in your body okay is just um oxalates you don't it you may pee out uh some of it but a lot of it is actually uh, stays in the body as oxalates okay mm. Not just prefets. So we're we're not doctors, medical doctors. We're just talking mm. from our experience as well, yeah. Yeah. research. So, yeah, do consult yeah. your doctor. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it is uh, so tempting to shop, make sure you uh, do so on a full. Yeah, that's a good good yeah. tip there. Yeah, it, it helps if you don't shop when you're hungry. You know? Because then you're just ready to buy anything that uh, you just want to put in your stomach. So, <laughs> I'm craving my dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? Love me yeah. cakes. Num, 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 num. Yes, it is. Yeah. Meat is great. Yeah. Yeah, meat is wonderful. It really is. Uh, for cancers, you really want to dive into the GKI range of under a three. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think you need to, I mean, people start getting obsessive about you know, uh, ketones and things like that. I think uh, keep it simple. You know, um, you know, I've been managing my blood cancer now for 12 years and, you know, I'm, nine and a half years remission and you know after three years of chemotherapy and it's not just the the damage from the cancer it's the damage from the chemotherapy that i'm repairing so um yeah it's not um it's not something i, I really worry about too too much you know keeping you know trying to get all these different numbers all in line it's it's a very simple process of just feeding your body the right nutrients and um, just trusting that your body will heal. It, and it will. It does. It's very resilient. Okay. Um, one little trick, though, if you um, – fasting does help. When it comes to things like um, producing more stem cells, which helps the body uh, recover, okay, fasting can help the body – uh, or st stimulate the body to produce more stem cells. So does heavy lifting, okay, uh, lifting weights in the gym. But um, another thing is to, when you're talking about the, the fuel for cancer growth, okay, uh, for tumor growth, um, you're looking at um, gl like glucose and glutamine. The glutamine is in meat, okay, but which is why some people will choose to uh, say fast every couple of weeks or every week or so, maybe fast like two or three days. 
to keep their glutamine stores down. But another way you can do it, you get the same effect as uh, fasting by cooking your meat well done. Okay, so you you pretty much just do. You don't have to fast if you cook your meat well done. You get the same effect in your body, and except that you won't stimulate um, stem cell growth uh, production. But you will. But you won't. Uh, or sorry, you will suppress the glutamine uptake. Okay, so it won't feed your tumors and that things things like that. So that helps a lot. Um, Okay, question, what do you use to clean your teeth? Um, I have stopped using toothpaste and mainly water. I wondered uh, what you used. Okay, pretty good question. How about you, Dave? G'day, Carl. Um, I'm, I'm still using toothpaste. Mm, me too. Although I think there, there's less fluoride in the toothpaste in Japan than back home, but, yeah, I'm still using toothpaste. Yeah. So you too. I Carl. use... Yeah, depends. Like I use sometimes just water, but um, I also use a fluoride-free toothpaste, zero fluoride in it. Uh, just to, yeah, it's, um, yeah. So that, that's not too bad. I'm not really sure exactly what's in what it, uh, other things might be in it though. Um, so, but you know, that's a you know something people have been. Um, talking about recently a lot of uh, trying to get rid of the fluoride and uh, like toothpaste and things like that. Um, actually, I, I, I read an, a good article this morning about fluoride in um, a lot of the uh, bottled waters that you buy. Um, mm. That's something you might want to take into account. If a lot of, I know a lot of people uh, buy naturals like spring waters and things like that, but some of them are actually quite high, just as high as um, in fluoride as tap water is um, but they also have just as many PFAs and things like that because there are, a lot of them are in plastic bottles too so it um, might be a good idea to have a look at that sort of stuff too so, um, yeah eat oysters for zinc yeah yeah I mean sugar uh, cancers and tumors in particular, they feed on sugar and, um, you know, glucose and glutamine. Okay. So the two main fuels for the tumors. Okay. So like I said, just, you know, zero carb or, um, you know, as little as you can. And with the gl uh, glutamine, you can suppress the glutamine from the meat by cooking it well done. Make sure it's very well done. Okay. I mean, don't, it doesn't have to be jerky when you eat it. I mean, it doesn't have to be that bad. Like, you don't have to cut through it, like, with a chainsaw or something. But, uh, um, yeah, cook the, the muscle yeah. meat well done and cook the fat. Make sure you eat lots of fat. All right. fat, is, fat is the biggest key for, I think, for, like, your hormones, for example, um, but for healing your lymphatic system, okay? Okay, um, I need to take back case to rule, so we'll get the uh, yeah, <laughs> if they don't work. Fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not bad. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely does. It certainly helps a lot. Um, depending on what um, what stage you're at, okay, um, you may need some medications along with the carnivore diet. Um, but you know, that's something you need to see your doctors about. And um, when it comes to treatment, I think you should always. I mean. Always talk to your doctors about what your diet. Um, when you're going through treatment, talk to your doctors about it, and yeah. Yeah, that doesn't mean that what they say is going to be right. Okay, always do as much research as you can and get as many opinions as you can from other other sources as well. Okay, because it, they just don't know. A lot of them just don't know what they're doing really when it comes to the nutrition. Um. Some people are 
so sick before they come to the carnivore diet and need some extra nutritional focus, support the catch. Yeah, exactly. Like I said just before, we're all coming from different places. So there, there may be some people that you need to supplement until you heal your body. And then once your body is healed, then you can sort of win yourself off supplements. You know? um, so it just depends on where you are and what's going on, that sort of stuff. So everyone's different. Yeah. Uh, during your healing process, uh, did you take uh, your answering? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I was going through treatment, like I was on chemo, I was on all sorts of other things, um, and especially the, the, the first treatment I went through, the r chart, which was absolutely brutal, Um yeah, I was on a lot of steroids as well. And for the time afterwards when I was going through uh, radiation and then I had like a year and a half of another form, like every two months I was on another treatment. Um, was the R part of the R chop was called rituximab. Um, so that, was, that sort of left me sick for a few days. But I was on steroids throughout that period as well. And the problem is, my food wasn't so bad, but steroids drives blood sugar up as well. So that was um, why I had a very short remission um, period. So like I, I had like a year and a half and then I was stage four again. Um, Kimberly, uh, what do you guys think about pickled eggs? This is my new obsession. <laughs> um, anyone on that one? I think um, I've Alaska. Never had them. Yeah, Alaska guy made them. There's a big guy, Alaska or something. He made it, makes his own pickled eggs. I think that's where that's come okay. from. Um, I haven't had them, but yeah, I hear they're really good. Yeah, I, I yeah, so far I'd never try them. I spent years watching my mother make pickled onions for my father. I'm like, oh no, I, I couldn't stand the smell. <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. Uh, I was just going to say, it reminds me, when I hear pickled eggs, just reminds me of pickled onions, and I'm just yep. like, oh. <laughs> oh <yeah. no. laughs> I, I haven't had pickled, pickled eggs. I, must, I, I, I don't think I've ever had pickled eggs, actually. But um, I have had, like in the past, I've had pickled uh, onions and things like that. I actually quite like pickled stuff. So, I like vinegar, though. You know, I, I like that mm. uh, sour sort of taste, so. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But uh, that's just me, I guess. I like that stuff. Um, okay, so let's get back on track here. Uh, please, if you – just a reminder, if you do have any questions and you want, please put the three cues in front because it makes it easier for us to see. Um, yeah. Do you, right, so, you want to have a look at that game that I sent in the private chat? See if that might we want to test that up. Where are we? Private chat game. Okay, I was wondering if we could try a game. Yeah, sure. How about we get the audience to suggest answers? Oh, that's not a bad idea. It has to be something um or someone Australian, e.g. Tim Tams, kangaroo meat, etc. We then each have to come up with a question. To answer that, to their answer. Okay. <laughs> kind of like whose line yeah. is it anyway? Yeah. Okay. So we can decide the winner by uh, which question gets most laughs, uh, most votes. What do you think? Okay. Yeah, let's give it a try. Uh, okay. is usually the kind of activities I hide in the back row. <laughs> <laughs> don't pick me. Don't pick me. I'll just start <laughs> passing you notes in the back of the classroom, love. Don't worry, we'll be right. <laughs> Distract the teacher. <laughs> it's time to wag, I think. <laughs> cute, cute, cute. Anyone else like billiards? <laughs> yep. Billiards, I, I pool, like snooker. Pool. I like pool. Yep. Yeah, I like, yeah, I like pool. Yep. Yeah. Pool's good. Mm. Yeah. What's the difference? I don't know what the difference is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, slightly Same different things. rules, different color balls, most sort of stuff. I, but uh, I don't know the rules for billiards, so that's why I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I love All right, so it. we're going to try Dave's game. Dave wants us to. Anyone in the audience? I want you to give us an answer 
and each four of us will try to come up with a question. Okay, and uh, we'll try and get the most laughs out of each, you know, for each answer. Okay. So the, okay. the answers can be something like Tim Tams, Paul Hogan, anything Aussie to do with Oscar, Australia, anything that's Australian. Yeah, anything to do with Australia. So it can be Australian food, Australian music, Australian movies, anything you want. Okay. Mm. Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Billy T. Billy T. Uh, I'm stuck okay, so we've got to come up with a question for the this. All right. Okay, we're coming for a question for Billy T. Mm. Okay. I got one. You got one? Mm. What does a true outbook, outback bush ranger never travel without? They've always got okay. Billy T. Yeah. How about... Um... What was, yeah, what was, hang on a second. Let me do it. I've got to check it. I've just, <laughs> Come on, Dave, this is your game. Name. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Yeah, you, I Lindy? was going to say a prime minister's name and probably embarrass myself uh, by just saying it wrong. You can't embarrass <laughs> yourself any more than me. I've just got blank. Blank, blank. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking I Billy think... Goats. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I can't get off the goats. <laughs> Something to do with goats, but no, um, Billy T. All right. So, what is. Uh, <laughs> I've, gone, I've gone blank. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's imagine. <laughs> Let's imagine, for the sake of argument, that um, John John Howard, his name is actually William, because I can't think of a politician with the name William. All right. So, um, what's John <laughs> Howard's what What's John Howard's secret superhero name? Billy T. Uh, okay. Yeah. I could, I, it didn't work because I couldn't think of a William politician. All that build up for that. Yeah. <laughs> Madly looking on Google for, yeah. Okay. So, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you drink when you go camping in Australia? Billy T. Yeah, it's a little bit too, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Well, Australian superhero name. <laughs> Billy T. I don't know. <laughs> No, that one's that, that's not real good. All right, let's get to the next one, shall we? Okay, we got uh, bushes. Bushes. No, scary. Bu bushes. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, Lindy, very good. What's none of his What's none of his scary secret name? <laughs> Billy T. <laughs> <laughs> Bushes. Bushes. I'm just going to say the first thing that comes into my head. Um, what do a group of... <laughs> Uh oh. What do uh oh. A, what, what do a group of Kates hide behind? Oh! <laughs> Out Kate's of the windy, windy moss. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Okay. Anything for bushes, anyone? Nothing? Well, I, I win by default. <laughs> okay, Dave wins that one. 
Uh, gum trees. Gum trees. Uh, maybe maybe this game's harder than I expected it to be. Oh, I'm trying to think <laughs> of something I mean, funny, and it's just not happening. <laughs> yeah. I wish somebody would put Tim Tams. I've got that already. All right, Tim I've got Tams. the Tim Tams. Sorry about Tim Tams. <laughs> <laughs> What's a koala? What's a koala version of a Tim Tam? Okay, gum leaves, gum trees. Oh, what? Uh, yeah. Let me see. What? Uh, what flavor? What flavor um, Tim Tams do koalas eat? Gum trees. Uh, this game gum sucks, trees. Dave. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, look who's just commented, Tim Tams. I'm calling him out. That's my youngest son. Oh. He's come and said, That's a good oh. point. That, uh, uh, Australian Billy T is made in China and full of oxalates. <laughs> <laughs> <Boom, boom. laughs> yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Yeah. Even you, you pick up English tea now and it's still, it's still made in China. Mm. Mad Max. Mad oh, Max. actually, Vegemite. Vegemite. Okay, what's likely to cause oxalate dumping? Veggie might. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, no, I've got one for that, but it's 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 not PG. <laughs> no, give it PG, please. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can. Uh, Veggie might. Um, what? Yeah, what is the one thing you can put on toast that can make you look like this? Yeah, Vegemite. <laughs> Vegemite. <laughs> okay, let's go to Mad Max. Mad Max. What movie was the start of Mel Gibson's Bad Mood? <laughs> He's been cranky ever since. He's been cranky ever since, bless his heart. And I do love him. <laughs> Mind you, you know, if you had your wife and child run over by a motor, by a motor, by a uh, biker, just, you might be pretty upset for a while too. Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I can't really think of a funny one for Mad Max. What? Um, what? Okay, so what do you call a place with lots of angry staff that sells hamburgers? Mad Max. <laughs> no, <laughs> like you McDonald's. didn't. No, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. That went right over my head. If you want the dad jokes. <laughs> Dang, is a mess. Mm, I don't know. A funny one for this bang is a mess might, might not be PG. Um, mm. <laughs> yes, you have to keep it clean. Hmm. All right. Um. S sorry, guys. I've given you this. <laughs> yeah, I give up on this one, day. Nightmare of a game. Yeah. Sorry, well, guys. I'm, I'm going to give you the answer for Tim Tams. Uh, the question for Tim Tams. Pre-carnival. Pre-carnival. What do you always wish would never run out? Tim Tams. Yeah. Tim Tams. yeah. yeah. Mm. It's like that. You remember that old Tim Tam ad where like, um, the girl rubs a lamp and a genie comes out and she, oh, the, the, the only wish she gets is like she like a never-ending packet of Tim Tams. It just, Wasn't that Kate Blanchett? Uh, might have been. I think might it was Kate Blanchett. Okay. Oh, wow. Here's a, another question but uh, <laughs> not related. Uh, what politician is honest? 
Um, yeah, trying to keep it PG, I'm just going to say none. None. Yeah. I can count on zero fingers. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, I would say very, very zero. few. Yeah. <laughs> very few. You could you could probably count them on one hand any, at least anyway. So. Uh, Hero Blinky Bill. Oh, Blinky <laughs> Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember Blinky yeah. Bill? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the hero koala. <laughs> uh, how do Kiwis find sheep in the long grass? I don't want to <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's, let's keep it PG, please. Okay. Very good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're all crazy. Yeah, you, you're pretty right. <laughs> yeah, I do. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can hear my son at that sheep joke. I could hear my son laughing his head off at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got, we got a few uh, answers to the uh, politician question. Okay, hang on. Who was the girl in the ad for Lamb uh, who gave up a oh. date with Tom Cruise? Oh, I remember that question. ad. A yeah. wise woman. A yeah. wise woman. Who it was? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. Was she famous? I don't recall. Oh. Yeah, don't know. That's that taking me back ran a bit. For ages, right? Yeah, politicians. Yeah, largely politicians are just useful idiots. The puppets for. Uh, People that run them, yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I can't say I remember that one. I remember the ad, but I can't say I remember who was um, who, who the girl was. So, um, okay. How about a carnival question? Let's go back to um, a bit of carnival for a bit. Um, so we've gone through cravings. And uh, what would be, let me see. He's got a carnival question. Um, <laughs> I can't think of a carnival question now. Uh, that, that, game has made me, that game has made me not able to think of any questions now. I'm completely blank. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Actually, I don't remember. He's speaking on the blondes. <laughs> <laughs> Got a thing about blondes, have you? <laughs> um, well, that's actually that's a good carnival question. Um, what about hair? Yes, uh, some people have noticed uh, when they go carnival, they get some hair loss. Mm. Um, hair loss, and others have had hair regrowing. Mm. Um, from my experience, it's, it's all about. Um, when people do go to carnival, um, they do under eat a lot for one, and they're just not getting enough food, so the, the nutrients are low, and their their hair may fall out. Another reason is that uh, your body is going through hormonal changes because you are healing your body after so long from eating like a standard Western diet, which is just completely nutrient deficient, and your body needs to heal. And it sort of gets rid of the old dry sort of hair and you get regrowth afterwards after a certain period. But I think largely it's just due to um, under eating basically and you're, you're iron deficient and uh, other minerals deficient, zinc, and things like that. So um, I think when you go carnival, a lot of people do tend to under eat uh, because they're trying to keep the, the same portions and you need to remind yourself because you are only eating meat, you need to eat a lot more meat. Mm. Anyone else want to add to that? Yeah, I lost a lot of hair, but I dropped weight very quickly at the start as well. So I think that was just a big shock to the system, my body. Yeah. I lost handfuls of hair. I also restricted fat because I was still in the mentality fat makes you fat from my yeah. years of being told stay away from fatty things. So I, I restricted fat for the first probably year and a half and I was under eating because I still have the lap band restrictions. So I tend to 
not keep my, a lot of my food down. It just gets stuck and I throw up and then I can't eat for six, seven, eight hours afterwards. So I had a lot of things going against me. And then my weight would stall because I wasn't eating and I wasn't having the fat. Like it was just, it's been a, night, a bit of a nightmare. And I'm still struggling with all of that. Um, but, you know, I get by. Last November, I did do some priming. And for me, priming means just having a couple of bites of meat every half hour, just, just keep all, all the way through the day. So like for three or four days, just do that priming and um, increasing my fats. And my hair's finally yeah. stopped falling out. Um, so that's been a relief because I, I was going to start to look like, you know, it Todd without <laughs> bald. But, um, yeah, I feel a lot better now as well. And um, But, yeah, that's scary losing your hair. It's it's not a nice oh, yeah. feeling. Yeah. Especially yeah. when I'm, yeah, even my hairdresser, she's like, oh, my God, where's your hair gone? It's so thin now. And it's just like frizzy now. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I'm hoping it'll start to grow back now. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, you know, I, yeah, I think that's one thing a lot of people uh, sort of stumble on when they go first go carnal. They don't realise how much fat they have to eat, you know, how much fat yeah. we should be eating. You know, fat is really important. Um, but like I said too, you know, they under eat a lot. Okay, question. Um, did any of you go through uh anger or mad and getting snappy yes, um, yes. Phase, i guess mm. yeah yeah, yeah. So i think about three months get... in i went yeah. through about a month of being really easily irritable very easily yeah. irritable. Yeah. i think that happens when you another another reason for that is you're under eating you're not eating enough fat again because you when you get fat adapted fat is your energy source so you need to eat a lot of fat you know um yeah i think most people go through that so you know it's just change part of the changes <laughs> you um, make it sound like menopause or something it's part of the changes that's your sea salt and um <laughs> Lake salt has minerals. Lake salt has minerals. As good as yeah, it's good for you. Yeah, it's good aid. Um, yeah, very much so. Like um, metaphors. Metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it goes away. I'm only forty. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, yeah. Like I said, like a lot of that comes from not eating enough to you know, try and increase your fat intake, and I think you you'll find that you won't get so snappy. So, I, I don't. Yeah. I found for me when um, getting snappy, um, it's it, for me it's been a bit of a strange balance because um, I'm wondering how much of it is the fact that, and I have been increasing the fats, but I'm wondering how much of that is confidence to actually speak out on stuff that's giving you the pops. Mm. I mean, how, how how many of us have actually um. sort of been pushed so far back into our own shell from a mental health point of view mm. where we've just gone, oh, I'm just going to keep the peace and say stuff all, it's just easier. But it, it, actually it isn't. And I'm just wondering, yes, I, I would definitely say that increase the fats but i'm wondering from a mental health point of view how much of that is the confidence to go uh excuse me but no 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 yeah no and, longer biting your tongue kind of thing yeah i, I i'm yeah. just wondering yeah wondering if there's anything in that mm. yeah well i mean it's going to be something to that because i mean there's i mean there's always someone going to say something stupid around you and mm -hmm. uh you're going to you know in the past, you might not have the confidence to say, no, you're just an idiot. But, um, <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah, I suppose now you're more confident to stand up for yourself. Um, but, uh, like, Jenny Murphy here is saying as well, a lot of that moodiness as well is also caused by withdrawal. You know, when you, um, like, especially early on, like those first three months mm -hmm. or so, you're mm. still going through withdrawals of, you know, especially if you're coming from like a, a, a the standard Western diet, you still have those addictions, 
And when you have those addictions, it, it does put you in a, in a bad mood when you're not getting it. You're not feeding yeah. that addiction, you know. Mm. So that, it just depends on where you're coming from as well, you know. Everyone's going to be different. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, like that's, you know, most people are doing that. So I can I can see them getting quite moody when they're not getting their addiction, you know. Mm. Some people just don't like change, and you're changing your whole lifestyle yeah. here, changing the way you're yeah, eating, right. and this is, you've got to adapt. And sometimes people think this is a diet. You know, once you're over, yeah. you can go back to how you're eating. But until you but, learn um, this is more a lifestyle and accept that, yeah. that you can start to be at peace with that decision. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're sort of re so, you're returning to uh, you're returning to where you, your lifestyle should have been. But yeah, unfortunately, we right. just never knew about it, you know. So it's like yeah. sort of going home, you know. Um, mm. But unfortunately, we've just never been there before. And, yeah, so it's it's a much bigger deal than just, you know, trying to lose a couple of pounds off the belly sort of thing. Um, my hair stopped falling out and the colour is coming back. Yeah. Um, I ate when I was hungry, depressed, bored at any time. I ate uh, pre-carnival until I didn't feel the need. Very good. Mm. Well done, Natalie. That Actually, I've noticed a lot um, because when you are eating enough and you're eating a lot, a lot of fat and a lot of meat, um, a lot of people's hair color is, has come back. Um, I don't know if you've noticed that. Like Some people have, have said that their hair color is coming back. Some mm. of the grey in mine is starting to, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine is a little bit, but I don't want it to. I'd rather I'd rather have grey hair than red hair. Moodiness <laughs> <laughs> can be caused by a dysfunction in the lower GI tract. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. so be aware yeah i mean it's going to be like i said there's going to be a lot of things going on when you especially when you're in the first months of um carnival diet because your your body is healing and it's doing you know, so much yeah it's going through a lot of changes mm. um yeah like gaba can cause anxiety certain gut bacteria produce gaba yeah mm. that's right so and like I said, just a lot going on. So you just have to give yourself – you have to give yourself space. You have to give yourself time okay, and room and just room to uh, to heal, basically. Yeah. And just, mm. just go with the flow. Just get through each day, one day at a time. And, uh, you know, it will it will happen for you. It will – you just have to give it time. So mm. – and, you know, depending on how far um, gone you are, like – where you are it may take longer than other people so don't try and compare your journey with someone else's mm -mm. okay like, like i say this all the time don't compare your chapter one with someone else's chapter 30 either no don't, mm. don't fall into day. that trap yeah and yeah. just go with it just let your body do the do the work as long as you're feeding your body the right food your body knows what to do okay it will do it and it will do it well so you just have to give it time Okay. Um, anyone got anything else you want to talk about? I've got a question for you. Which 80s Aussie pub rock band was named after a cartoon in Mad Magazine? Okay. There are three choices. The fish, the fish John West rejected, Spy versus Spy, and the unheard. Spy versus spy. Versus spy. Yeah, spy versus spy. Spy versus spy. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, let's go down to this one. Might get you. Let's uh -oh. see. Yeah. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. All right. In question one, one of the options was the fish John West rejected. Now, did I make this up or was it a band 
that played the Aussie pub circuit in the 80s? So you got three choices. And the question, and the second part of that question is, uh, where are they from? So there's no, the Raider made it up, or yes, they're from Tassie, or yes, they are from Western Australia. I'll go with no, you made it up. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Well, you're all wrong. Oh. They were a real band. They played. They were the from Tassie. Circuit, and they were from Tasmania. Should have trusted my instinct. Should have trusted <laughs> my instinct. You should have. See, yes. the only time I stuff things up is when I don't follow my instinct. That's it. <laughs> that was the same for most people. Uh, question. Can plain yogurt help with GABA? Who wants to answer that one? I've got no I'm, idea. I'm not no. qualified. Yeah, no I can't say for sure. But if you do, I can't say I can't, I can't say for sure it's going to help because, you know, everyone's different as well. But um, if you do take or if you do uh, have a yogurt, um, I can say like the best type of yogurt to get would be like a, a pot set Greek style yogurt or yeah. a pot set um, Middle East style yogurt with, with something with no thickeners or um, any kind of sweeteners or any kind of um, uh, yeah, yeah, sort of blend blends in them, which a lot of them do have. So um, just be aware of that sort of stuff. So I, I can't really say if it, it's going to help with GABA, though, honestly. Um, I think Flock of Seagulls was from Australia, and they had that one great song. I just can't remember what it was. And yeah, Flock I of Seagulls. Ran, was ran, ran, yeah, ran so far away. Yeah, that was their one big hit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, given they're called Flock of Seagulls, I thought their greatest song might have been Give Us a Chip. <laughs> this, is, this is payback for making you laugh in the interviews, isn't it, Dave? Right, You're put right. Back off. <laughs> Fermented foods, perhaps kimchi. Um, yeah, fermented. I like fermented. Fermented vegetables are the best um, vegetables you can you can eat if you're going to eat any vegetables. And uh, the only thing you might want to worry about is uh, with kimchi is the sauces because they are fermented in sauces. So they the sauces may have seed oils and sugar and stuff like that in them. Mm. But uh, another good one is sauerkraut. Sauerkraut I used. When I was going through treatments and um, afterwards, I used sauerkraut before I went carnival because it, it really helped with IBS and uh, it also helped with reflux. Uh, sauerkraut is just cabbage that's fermented in salt, okay? And salt is very good for your esophagus, uh, esophageal mucus, and uh, also good for your bowels. So that's one good reason to have sauerkraut, okay? But, of course, now I just have a lot of salt um with uh, my food so that helps a lot okay um yeah so just a couple of things to check out there anyone else had fermented vegetables before fermented no. food yeah no, I, 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 uh, the, the past, smell of them yeah. and i just can't no nah. okay i quite like sauerkraut actually it's very bitter but um yeah i quite like it um Having sauerkraut with my brisket right now. Yeah. Mm, nice. Very good. Aged meat. Has anyone had aged meat before? No, I haven't. Not yet. Not that I Not know me. of. No? Uh-oh. No, I've never, I've never had it aged either, actually. So, but meat doesn't really last very long here. I just, you know, I buy it fresh and cook it and eat it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do like making my own sauerkraut and kimchi. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you make it yourself, obviously it's going to be a lot cleaner and it's going to be a lot, um, a lot safer. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've got nothing against fermented vegetables, especially sauerkraut, um, because I did use it for a number of years and it was very, very good for help and you know, stopping IBS. And um, it got me off uh, a lot of medications as well. Um, and again, also very good for reflux and esophageal mucus, especially after like a cold or flu. You've got that esophageal mucus sort of residue. It's there. I mean, it's yeah. a it's a natural body reaction to try and get rid of infection, the mucus from the esophagus. Okay, um, but you know, uh, it, it helps clean that up when you ha you have uh, sauerkraut things like that. But salt is also very good for that, which is why um, sauerkraut is so good. Okay. Um, Love Japanese pickles. Mm. Okay. Um, let's see. Which 80s Aussie pub ska band covered the song Montego Bay? Oh. We've got three choices. The All Nighters, the Angels, and the Aztecs. I want to say the Aztecs. Yeah, I was going to say the Aztecs. Doesn't sound like an I'll, angel song. I'll go with the All Nighters. Dave, well done. Wow. The All Nighters. Yeah, that was a guess. That was a guess. I've never heard of any of them. I've heard of the yeah. Aztecs, I think. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, well. I think kombucha has a lot of sugar. I tried it one time. It was. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, it depends. You know, You're I mean, braver than I am. Some of those like fermented stuff, you just got to have to, um, you know, you have to check the, the, what they're fermented in as well. Mm. As to explain, no, sorry, Jenny, it was the um, all nighters. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, what band from the eighties did Tumbleweed evolve from? The American Eagles, the Roger Ramjets, and the Proton Energy Pills. The last one. The no Proton idea. Energy Pills? Yeah, no I'll idea. Go with the, I'll go with that one. I like the Roger Ramjet name. I'll have that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's actually the, uh, the Proton Energy Pills. Very that, well done, ladies. <laughs> oh, I, didn't, I didn't guess, so it's all girls. <laughs> Okay. Which Aussie pub band uh, sang No Secrets? The Radiators, Cold Chisel, or The Angels? The Angels. Yeah, good on you, Lindy. Yeah, I only know one angel. angel song and it's the one that counts. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Fair enough. Yeah. Love the Angels. They were great. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Jenny, another one wrong. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> okay. Uh, which Aussie pub rock band released the 80s album Red Sails in the Sunset? <gasps> Midnight Oil. Well, hang on a sec. There's a choice here. Okay. <laughs> wait for the choices. <laughs> just, just wait a sec, will you? All right. We've got choice number one, Midnight Oil. Johnny Diesel and the Injectors or Rose oh, Tattoo? I love them. Could it be number I one? Love Johnny Diesel. <laughs> you might be right, Dave. Naughty corner for me. <laughs> what, what was your clue, Dave? I, I, I don't know. Just, I, had a, I, could, I could feel it in my waters. <laughs> <laughs> now, if that had been Sailor the Century, I'd have definitely won that one. <laughs> buzz. You would have forgot to press the buzzer, I think. <laughs> I, I all but slapped the table. Let it out. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, here's a good one for you. Which Aussie uh, pub band from the 80s sang Die Yuppie Die? You got Tism, Outline, and the Painters and Dockers. Painters and Dockers. Painters and Dockers. Yeah, no idea. Die, yuppie, Anybody? die. Oh. Good title. Yeah. 
It's the only band I know. I don't know the other two. So, Painters and Dockers for me. Painters and Dockers? Yeah, same. You're going to go with the ladies, Dave? Yeah. Ah, good choice. The Painters and yeah, Dockers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which of these cold chisel songs was not oh. from the 80s? This one's a little more difficult. This one was not from the 80s. Okay. You got Cheap Wine, K San, and Flame Trees. Flame Trees? I think. What was the first one again? Uh, cheap Wine. Yes. Yeah, I'm K San. Go, I'm going to go Cheap Wine. Flame Trees. Flame Trees? Flame trees? Cheap yeah, Wine. Flame trees. Kaysan. Oh, 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 we're all wrong. <laughs> bah, bah. Ah. Bah, bah. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, Nathan, not cheap wine. It's Kaysan. Yeah, cheap wine and the other one, uh, they're both from the 80s. Flame Trees. Uh, actually, Flame Trees, um, I think it was later in the 80s. So, yeah. I've never heard okay. of that one. I love okay, trees, complete yeah. the title. Uh oh. Mars Needs Something was an 80s album by Aussie pub band, the Hoodoo Gurus. So you've got three choices guitars, tambourines, and uh, guitars. So Mars guitars. Needs. Guitars. Guitars? Can I, can I choose a. A, a D option, if you want. <laughs> Can I buy that? Mars needs Mars needs a bar. Mars needs a bar. Sorry, sorry, dad joke. A bar? Dad joke. Sorry. Okay. Mars bar. Uh, I've got no oh, okay. idea. Basically, I'm sticking yeah. with guitars for sure. Guitars. Okay, mm -hmm. let's try guitars. Yes, bingo. Yay. Okay. All right, last one. Which Sydney-based Aussie pub rock band released Love in a Box and Alone With You in the 80s? So we've got The Cockroaches, The Church, and The Sunny Boys. Sunny Boys? Yeah, I was, yeah I'm going to go with Sunny Boys, yeah. definitely, yep. Sunny <laughs> Boys? <laughs> What, what do you think, Dave? Yeah. What was the first one? The cockroaches. Okay, I'll go with the cockroaches because I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Sunny Boys. Yay. Uh, yeah, very good. Okay, so speaking of Australian rock bands, which one was your favourite? I love good the good job. Love a bit of Jimmy, Cold Chisel. Yeah. Uh, Screaming Jets, Hinder. I think Hinder's, a, are they yeah. Aussie? Hinder? Hmm, not sure. Can't there are just it. so many. Yeah. I mean, I've got a Spotify playlist of just nothing but Australian stuff. I mean, there's so much. But, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with Lindy. If I had to pick one, Cold Chisel. Oh, Lordy. yeah. The music was just amazing. AC, DC, Kimberly. Very good. Yaka daka. I used to like a bit of Ice House. Do you remember them? <gasps> no, oh, Ice House. Yeah. What, what, was yeah. His, what was his name, the lead singer? I, Ida Davis. Ida Davis. Ida yeah. Davis. Yep. That's right. Yep. Ida Davis. Um, Man of Colours. <gasps> Great yeah, Southern Land. <laughs> Especially oh, old yeah. AC, DC, yeah. Yeah, Bon yeah. Scott was really good. Oh, yeah. wasn't he just? Yeah, he was really good. Oh. Um, See you yeah. know, Echo? Oh, oh my right, gosh. That's another good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all I can do to not sing. <laughs> yeah, Pseudo Echo are really good, actually. Um, I love the Hoodoo Gurus as well. Um, yeah. Pretty good. Um, yeah. I mean, it, there's a lot of really good music. It depends on the mood you're in, too, but... Uh, well, I mean, one of my all-time favourites has got to be the Angels. Um, 
But, yeah, yeah. Do it. I mean, noise works. Noise works. <gasps> yeah, noise works are good. Yeah. Quiet boys. Yeah. Good songs. Men at work. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're good. Um, so much great music in Australia. Fantastic music. Yeah, especially the seventies and eighties. I think were the yeah. best. I think that yeah, between mm -hmm. the seventies and eighties, middle, they were the best sort of uh, era for uh, Australian music. Really, yeah. uh, Australian. They were still fun too. James yeah, yes. Australian mm. Reckless. Yeah. When Credit Reckless House. came out, oh my god! When Reckless came out, I couldn't stand it. I thought it was the most pointless song on the face of the earth. But then as I got older, I'm like, oh, my God, it's brilliant. It is a brilliant song. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's some really good music. Mm. Uh, what, would be, what would be one of the most motivational songs for you? Mm. Motivational yeah. Australian song. Yeah. Mm. Oh boy. I've got Friday on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here comes the weekend. Yeah. That was always a good one. Yeah, you always play that like Monday one. morning, you go to work. And yeah, I've got Friday on my mind. Friday on my mind. <laughs> I've got one that whenever I do listen to it, it genuinely gives me a lift, and that is You're the Voice by John Farnham. Oh, yeah, that's good. I forget about John uh, Farnham. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. yeah that, I remember when I first heard that, and I'm like, <gasps> when those bagpipes like, come in at the end, oh. I really like his version of Help, though. That was really good. Oh, uh, Yes. That was like the best version, you know. Yeah. It was a great version. Yeah, really good. Um, I think one of my favorite, actually, sort of uh, like gym tracks, you know, that motivates me. It uh, it goes when I go to the gym. As ACDC, if you want blood, Bon Scott, and um, they take a long line. The Angels, yeah. Two of the mm. two of my uh, most motivational songs from uh, yeah when I mm. for, for gym music yep you know it sort of pumps up the blood a bit gets your heart racing it's pretty good Sex Pistols yeah good UK band mm. yeah yeah um okay so I'm starting to wind down a bit um. Let me see. Any advice? What would be your first or the first and best advice for uh, newcomers to carnivore diet? Maya, when you want to start? Oh, you've got to learn to be kind to yourself. You've got to be patient with yourself and just be at peace inside and just trust the process. But you've, you've, and I have to remind myself this of this every day. You've got to be kind to yourself because this is going to be something quite unlike any other dietary change that you've ever embarked upon. It's not just a gentle curve. It is a hairpin and it yeah. will challenge you, not just from a healing yourself inside, losing the weight, losing the inches, looking at the photographs. It's, it's, it's all of those things, yes. But from an information point of view, it is going to challenge you. No, Just absolutely. keep your mind open and be kind to yourself in the process, please. My all-time motivational song is The Wheels on the Bus Go Round. The Wheels on the Bus Go Round and Round, Round and Round, Round and Wheels on the Bus. <laughs> yeah, good one, Ed. Um, yeah. No, that's good. You know, be patient with yourself. You know, uh, give yourself time, give yourself space, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, yeah, transition at your own pace. Um, you know, from my mind, I think for most people, 
this is something that is very personal. I think you need to work out, the first thing you need to work out is can you moderate and um, if so, if you can moderate, for example, uh, then transition as slowly as you as you want to. Yeah, I know people who have been doing it for two years and are still still transitioning. Okay, they still drink alcohol and stuff like that, but they've achieved their goal. So, um, it you know they mm. they're just sort of doing things very slowly, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's it's always up to you what you want to do and how you want to do it. But um, I, you know, from my mind, six to eight, you know, 12 weeks even, you know, transition mm. is a good period. And after that, you should be um, as strict as you want to be, depending on what your goal is as well. Um, mm. Throw away the scale, okay, because it's, it, it means nothing. Um, and be patient. You know, just trust that your body will do what it's supposed to do is, as long as you give it the right food, because it will. All right. Uh, Dave, any advice? Or Lindy? Lindy, you want to get... Yeah, no, I was going to say, yeah, throw the scale away, divorce it. You don't need it. it just concentrate right. on healing. It's a healing journey. That's more important. Without your health, mm. um, you've got nothing. Weight, you can tweak. And <laughs> it's going to come off down the line. What are you mm. laughing at? <laughs> 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 okay, Nathan wins. Straight up, Nathan wins. <laughs> Comment yeah. of the night, Nathan wins. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather put it in this mouth, but anyway, but he wins. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you, Anne. What? <laughs> Wait, what now? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Yeah, good. Yeah, stay off the yeah. scale. We'll play with your head. Yeah. Just keep it simple. You don't need to complicate things. Don't worry about macros and tracking and all that. That can happen later mm. down the track if you stall or you're close to your, your goal and you can't budge that last few kilos. But, yeah, just have fun with it. Enjoy. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, it's right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, yeah, Frederick Nietzsche said, uh, you know, there is more wisdom in your body than in all the philosophy around, you know, that uh, in the world. So, and there really is, you know, the, your body knows what to do at any time and uh, mm. you just let it trust it. I transitioned to an alien from Melnick. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. All right, guys, so it's been over an hour and a half. Um, another great night, another good laugh. Um, thank you, Marwen, for joining us tonight. And uh, I hope everyone had a good time and uh, also got some good information out of it. So uh, we'll leave it there tonight. And I hope you all have a great week and see you again next week. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Yeah. Bye, uh...